since you were a kid. I could blow my knee out, both knees, and still kick your ass. <laughs> we're trying to find the Robbie Hummel statue. I wanted to kill you. <laughs> All right, welcome in another episode of the Goodman and Hummel podcast. I'm Jeff Goodman. He's Rob Hummel. And uh, man, Vegas got the best of me. And I didn't even do anything, Rob. I just didn't feel great in Vegas. And then being stuck in a casino, man, it was it was not. And, and the, the hard part is, like, when you don't feel well in Vegas and, and games going on all day, we were doing pregame shows. So we we're getting up super early because of the time change. Then we're doing post game shows and we're doing it over again every day. And you got coaching changes. You got the portal going. I, I, I'm not going to lie, Rob. Um, 14 days from today, I will be headed back after the uh, the title game and and be able to kind of get. And then we're putting our house on the market on April wow. 4th. So you it's, sound like a teenager who like did something really bad, and you're like, I, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> so you sound like where where you were saying there that stinks was uh were the shows good at least shows were good we had a blast um we might there's a chance there's a chance that this could be named the goodman and henson podcast next year there's a chance I think there's a good i think there's a good chance of that <laughs> now john henson is awesome. i hope i get fired honestly i don't know if you know, do you know point. henson you know no, I don't. I don't. He's, he's awesome. Just from playing against him, but yeah. not we didn't play against him that much. He's man. he's funny, man. He's uh yeah, he's a good dude. Good dude. He was uh, out. Please there. tell him it's his. He can have this spot. <laughs> he can have it. The fans though, they want you back. I think they want. I don't you think back. they do. I think the fans are like, dude, he's, your time has come. Your time has come on this podcast. You you be, time. Yes, that's what the fans think. I think. You're headed out to Detroit for uh, doing radio for for the Detroit Midwest Regional. I'm here in Boston, thankfully. The the Midwest Regional is here in Boston. Um, I will say this. Let, let's let's first go with this. Give me the one game, Rob. The one game that you think is the best Sweet Sixteen matchup. Now that we've got the Sweet Sixteen field, I'll start. I think right. it's Creighton Tennessee. I think you're at it. I think it's Creighton Tennessee. Yeah, because again, it's going to be visually appealing and really interesting, right? I mean, you've got probably, I don't, I mean, it's going to be a top ten pick, Dalton Connect, uh, who could take over a game. You haven't seen him in person yet this year, but you've seen him on TV plenty, and you've got a Creighton team that you have seen that they're just when they're on, they're fun to watch. They like to play fast. Uh, Kalkbrenner is a stud, and then potentially you get a Kalkbrenner. Uh, Zach Eady matchup potentially in the Elite Eight, which would be yeah. freaking fantastic. I, I think that that's a good call. I'll be different. I'll give you a different game. I'll go Illinois Iowa State. I just think the the elite defense of Iowa State taking on the elite offense of Illinois, and just you know, Illinois does so many back downs from the wing, and I don't know if you against Iowa State you start doing that, man. The, the way that they guard and the uniqueness they guard with, where they like load up from the baseline, and I that's just going to make that really hard. I, I don't know if they'll be able to do that the way that they have done all year long. So I I think that, that that for the chess match reason of that of like having to see the coaches adjust to what they're doing, and just you know you you, you get a team that guards like that against an offense with Damask and Shannon. I mean that that's. To me, that's really intriguing Thursday night. What do you think of Purdue's path now? What do you think of Purdue's path? Uh, Gonzaga, to me, I think they'll beat the crap out of them. I, I, really I kind of, yeah, I, I think it's going to be interesting with that. They've already beaten both team, both Gonzaga and Tennessee. Not that I think that that really means all that much at this point. That was in November, which feels like it's like seven years ago. <laughs> And Gonzaga certainly is is a different team since changing their starting lineup up. But I just don't feel like Gonzaga's strengths really hurt Purdue, I guess. It's not like that they've got, you know, the the guard play. And, and Nemhart is good. Don't get me wrong. Like he, But he's, I don't know. I, I just, I don't feel like the matchup there. The Tennessee thing, if, if they beat Creighton, I think that that was a toss-up game in Maui. You know, that, that was a totally kind of 50-50. It went Purdue's way. That would be a war, you know, and, and Tennessee has the physicality and the bodies, I think, to 
to at least throw at Edie. Um, yeah, I, I kind of feel the, the same way. Um, but Gonzaga's playing good basketball, you know, after losing to, to St. Mary's in the, in the WCC final, they, they've, they've handled business in the tournament. You know, I, who have they beaten? I'm, they beat Kansas without. Oh, duh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, they I, killed them, them, but Kansas isn't Kansas. But Kansas is wounded like that without McCuller. They, right. And they, they were not, you know, they, they're not the traditional Kansas team, but give Mark few a lot of credit because they were a popular upset pick and yep. look at where they're at again, back in the sweet 16. So you, you just saw San Diego state in person twice. Yeah. Do they have any chance of beating the UConn rep? They'd have to shoot it the way they did um, against Yale, which was shocking. <laughs> I mean, they they made every shot, and they're a bad three point shooting team right. in conference play. They're last in the Mountain West in three point percentage, so they'd have to do that again. Ladie is a problem. He's now awesome, he, he, he is a tank, and he he can make threes, and he makes pull ups, and he can face you up and drive you, and he can post up. It was funny. Dutcher said to us, "This is kind of like Dean Smith." So that he's the reason that Ladie was not doing this last year. He goes, I totally held him back <laughs> because he said with Matt Bradley being a guy that was really on the ball and you're, you're playing, you know, Keisha Johnson's obviously pretty good. And Nate Mensa was really important to what they did. So where are you going to play him? They had to bring him off the bench. So they, he said that when he sat out for a year, that was two years ago. Now he was murdering in practice, just, just getting buckets. So I, He's a problem for UConn. That will be, you know, that's definitely number one on the scouting report. But they shot the ball so well. I think they made 13 threes. And that's not that's not the norm for them. They they normally have to beat you with their defense, but they were they they beat Yale with both offense and defense. Yeah, I'm worried about some of these sweet 16 matchups being routes. I think the Elite Eights are gonna shape up to be awesome, but I I, I think UConn may slaughter San Diego State. I think Purdue might slaughter Gonzaga. Like those are those are games I worry about a little bit. The other ones aren't as bad. Like, you know, Houston Duke. Oh, that's good. Gonna be interesting. Gonna be really good. Um, Creighton, Tennessee, we already talked about Iowa State, Illinois should be really good. Um, Clemson, Arizona could be really good. I mean, do you like how this whole thing went where you had the upsets and now you've got pretty much all the, the big boys left. I mean, this yeah, I guess is other, other than NC state, right. Yeah. Um, they're, they're the lone double digit seed. I don't know. Nobody, I mean, I, nobody worse. My, my favorite part of the tournament is the upsets, which is hilarious because last year the place I played had the biggest upset of them all. Um, but I, yeah, I, I'd like now, I guess at this point, you kind of can run out of gas, you know, like the 11, 12, 13 seeds sometimes get blasted right. in the sweet 16. I, I don't know. I, I kind of like it more when there's more chaos. This was kind of the, the chalkness of this is it's not bad. It's just, I, my, my, this is so crazy. My favorite days of the tournament are Thursday and Friday. I, I love the first two days of the tournament so much. I really do. Um, and I guess the one thing that stinks about, doing the games and there's not many downsides because it's really awesome to do it is that that if you're a fan of the tournament you're really just locked into your pod of games yep i got to watch a little bit but between the practices and then you, when you're doing your games it's a marathon you got four games in a row you know you don't get to watch um but i i really do enjoy as a fan of college hoops the thursday friday the fact that they're just rapid firing games off and there's three on at a time until like 10 PM until yep. you, then you maybe start to slow down. That's my favorite part of the tourney. I, I do think, and I agree that there, there could be, although, you know, like Creighton, Tennessee, really a game. Duke Houston, really a game. NC state's playing great. You know, that that'll be interesting with Marquette. Gonzaga Purdue. I, I hear you. It could, you know, I don't think that that's a great matchup for, for the Zags, but still, you know, that's to, to me, though, it's fascinating that Gonzaga and Purdue have played three times since last year. <laughs> this will be the third game in two seasons. You know, that that's and and the and also the fact that you've got set up in the Midwest Regional. It's like the Maui Invitational. It could fall out that if Purdue were to win all of their games and Marquette were to win, you would have literally their same path from Maui. That's you would see them play Gonzaga, Tennessee, and then Marquette. Which is very bizarre. That's unbelievable. Yeah, no, you're right. That, and 
going back to what you said about this is the first time I ever did the Vegas thing. That was the benefit. The benefit was sitting in front of huge TV screens all day from morning to night and watching whatever games you yeah. they're all there. They're all there for you. Now, I feel like you do get crazy distractions. Right. Like there's people coming up to you probably. There's also the the fact that you know, there's people winning lots of money or losing lots of money and having emotional reactions to that during games. Um but I've always heard that Vegas is amazing to watch the tournament. Do, is it? Does it live up to that hype of? Yeah, it, it, it was because again they've got this thing first to fifteen. Rob, I had no idea before I went out there. Well, what? What is that? The bet is you're betting whatever oh. team gets to fifteen first. So, so it's like it like. Money. But do they do? Do they like then have first to thirty and forty or like? Does it yeah, just but everybody has first to fifteen. That's the big one. I can't, so I literally, can't. you'll hear, you know, fans erupt when yeah. when they get to fifteen. That's uh, I like that. That's that's cool. It's a fun. It's a fun atmosphere. But you're right. The the only hard part is the distractions around you to be able to focus. Yeah. You know, like I'm dealing with, you know, guys. You know, Dusty May taking the Michigan job, and I'm not. It's harder to make phone calls. You're in a casino. You're not. You're not doing the things that you would do. Like right now, I'm. I'm organized. I got. I'm at my desk. I could watch all the games now if I was home and, and get more done. But it, it was fun. It was fun. I mean, it was different. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. But there's there's downsides to it as yeah. well. The best month of the year is here which is why you need to know that we are now partnered with BetMGM. We'll be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 all through the NCAA tournament. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use the bonus code FIELD, and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM, regardless of whether or not that bet is. Hits. Here's the best part. All you need to do is deposit and bet $10 of your hard-earned money. This is how you make it work. Download the BetMGM app and sign up using the bonus code FIELD. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game. And you get up to $1,500 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your bet. Just make sure you use that bonus code FIELD when you sign up. Most importantly, we do have some fun stuff coming for the conference tournaments and especially for the NCAA tournament. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops, odds boosts, and what I love the most, a nice parlay boost for anything you could possibly imagine betting on in the NCAA tournament from odds and getting an at-large bid to Final Four Futures to the highest seed to make to the Sweet 16. I'm calling it right now. BetMGM is the king of the prop bet for your March Madness needs. So go download the BetMGM app, use the code FIELD, and sign up today. And while I've got you a quick request, the best way to support the Field of 68 and our content you get for free is to engage with us. Rate and review the pod. Like and share the YouTube videos. Tell your friends about us. It helps in a world where the algorithm is king. And now, back to the show. There, there might be only one better week to, to go to Vegas if you're a sports fan, and that is that is next weekend, where you can get the Masters, the NBA playoffs, and the NHL playoffs all at once. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. That would be, you know, for me, that would be a little bit easier. Um, yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's run through now our final four picks. Let's, let, let, let's run through. That we picked before? I don't think I ever actually sent you mine. You didn't, did you? Which I'm glad I did. All right. Well, you can do them now. You no, I'll tell you who they were. Okay, like, I just got to remember who they are. Um, I know it was Kentucky. That was yeah, a great pick. Me too. Me too. Um, why did I let myself get talked into that? <laughs> I'm the Purdue, UConn, Arizona. That's so I had I, Purdue, UConn, Carolina. So I'm going to keep those three, as I'm sure you will too. Who are you replacing Kentucky with? Hold on. Uh, you'd say yours, and I got to look at them. Mine were Kentucky also, was in what 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 region was Kentucky in? Uh, they were in the south. They were in the south. So I have Purdue, UConn, Carolina. I I'm going to stick with my pick for Carolina to win it all. I don't feel great great about it, but I just I wanted to come up with something a little bit different than than everybody going with UConn and Purdue. Yeah, um, frankly. So the south would be Duke, Houston, and Marquette, NC State. South would be. 
Houston, yeah, Houston, Duke, NC State, Marquette. Uh, I went, I actually went Marquette with this one. Yeah. I'll go Duke. Yeah, I mean, Duke's. I like the way they're playing. I'll go, and uh, that could look dumb. Houston could totally win that game. But I'll go Duke along with my pick of UConn, Arizona, and Purdue. Uh, And you have Purdue to win it all still? Yeah. Of course you do. Of course you do. Shocking. This is the year, baby. Shocking. Um, <laughs> so I picked. What do, what do you want me to do? Change it? No, you got to go. You got to stick with it. That's how I am with Carolina. Again, I don't. I don't love it. Love it. Dude, some of the narratives, though, that Purdue has like added all these pieces to change. They added one guy. Right. Right. One. Guy. They've gotten better. They've had players get better. You know, and they've got the best player in the country still. But that that's just a hilarious. No, it, it's, it's the blueprint is again try to keep some of your core. Now Purdue kept most of it. UConn kept some of it, and then you know all the coaches that I'm talking to, they're 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 trying to navigate this portal and say, hey, listen, if we can keep really, can you keep forty uh, percent of your roster? You know, That's of so your main sad. guys. Really, that is such a sad statement. Can you keep, dude. Can you keep five of your top eleven? Bring in two freshmen. Bring in three transfers. That's like the perfect blueprint for most coaches right now if they can do it. Yeah. No, um, the game the game has changed and it's it's rapidly evolving here too. I just hope I I, I know that there was articles written the first weekend and there was tweets and if Greg Sankey screws this up, I will never forgive him. It would be awful. It, it, it he can, they could ruin the tournament. Right. I don't know how it can stop because I get where their motives are coming from. I get why they're they're feeling that way as the commissioner of a power conference. It's awful. But though. the best things that I saw was was Kentucky losing, and it's not no offense to Kentucky. It's right. the fact that that kid goes goalkeeper make, goes out and makes ten threes. Yep. And the the building is just a buzz. Or like when Yale beats Auburn, and no offense to Auburn. But that is what is awesome about the tournament, you know. Like those are the, the games that you were that you remember, and I I just think that we are so at risk and and so close to ruining that, and that would be a shame. That truly would be a tragedy, because this event has become, from a fan perspective, from a TV ratings perspective, it's as good as it's been. Like the the, the everything is good there. Don't screw it up. Just don't screw it up, and and it will continue to be good. But if you get greedy, and you and you try to 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 ruin this, and it's it's funny, you know, I was on BTN set at the Big Ten tournament uh, semis and finals, and I respect Bruce Weber so much. Yep. I I do. I I have so much respect for him, and he said at the on the last day on air something about how we need to expand the tournament because we need to get more players to experience this and coaches to experience this. And I, I understand his position, you know, as a coach, you're like, well, if I make the tournament, I keep my job, Yep. but man, it, I, I respect his opinion, but I disagree with it. You know, like I, I, I truly believe that the tournament is cool because it's, 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 it's it is exclusive. Yep. And because of the exclusivity, it means something to get in. You know, if we have 140 teams get in the tournament, yeah, more kids get to play, but it's like, well, of course we made it. We really got to suck to not make it. <laughs> like, we've yes. already got – the bubble is already kind of, you know, well, that team's not that good. That team's not – and NC State, I guess, is would be the the, the the opposite of that because they, you know, they, they weren't playing all that well until the ACC. But, but they got teams- they, in the conference tournament. They earned their way in. Right, and how many teams, Rob – are even going to have to earn their way in the conference tournament by they winning. Wouldn't. Like most of those teams, if you expand, almost every high major team is already going to be in the field. Well, and I, I thought James Jones from Yale made some really good points about like the metrics are a joke for the mid majors, and, and Indiana State feels that no one's going to play them at home. Right, you can right. only get a quad one game on the road, and it's only going to be for, like Alabama brought in. I, I think uh, they, they they played a couple. No, oh, Indiana State played at Bama. Yep. Um, and Michigan State. So Izzo and Oates are two guys that will schedule anybody. You know, they they play two of the toughest schedules in the country every year. Many. There aren't many. But there aren't many guys, and no one is doing that. When I was a kid, I remember Cincinnati, Bob Huggins would come to Valpo, and Gene Cady would bring Purdue to Valpo like every three or four years. But they couldn't get games. 
after Bryce made that shot. Right. Why? Well, Even mean, before, it, why would you go? And now that the metrics are what they are, you would never go. No, I have coaches telling me now, Rob, here's a, a lot of these coaches are going to change their scheduling philosophy. And, and because and the of big, the big 12, the big 12 route. Yes. They're going to play shitty teams and beat the, and shit, out beat of the shit out of them. That and, is terrible. And that's not good for the sport at all. No, it's at not. All. The NCAA has got to change that. That that cannot stay. That is. And also, we've got to do something about the reviews. We oh. we have got to get a challenge system, at least on the table to discuss. Yeah. Look at the NBA. If right. you want, like, we can't review every single play. If you want to challenge it, challenge it. If you win, you keep it. Yep. You can get two of them or whatever. And then, but then also you think about the the block and the what game was I watching where there was a block at the end? It was totally close. oh the Sanford game, Sanford and uh, who who were they playing? Yeah, uh, Kansas. Yes, the Sanford KU game. If you now it doesn't address who gets the ball afterward, you know that that's still a problem, and it does kill the momentum of the play. But then at least you can review it. You know, if you want to challenge it, challenge it. I just, I, they totally need to look at that. No, it's awful. The end of the games take forever. Every game. I mean, you're back to back. We had so many challenges in, in Spokane. Really? So bad. Oh, God. The, so the bad. first night, our last game took like two hours and 38 minutes or something. It was r- ridiculous. There is nothing better in sports than tournament time, which is why I need to tell you guys about our partners over at Rhythm. If you're into sports betting, you need Rhythm, the place for data-backed props and picks. For those that are unfamiliar, Rhythm, spelled R-I-T-H-M-M, is the go-to mobile app for player props and game picks. Backed by AI predictive models, Rhythm helps you make smarter and faster betting decisions across all sports, but particularly college basketball. With Rhythm, you get data-backed picks for every single Division I game, every single Single day users get free picks daily with the ability to upgrade to unlimited access. If you want to increase your edge and win more, more bets, go to the link in the description and download Rhythm today. That's R I T H M M, the place for data backed props and picks. And while we're here, let me tell you about our newest partner for the month of March, Splash Sports, the home of certified community competition where you get to play against your friends and not the house. Whatever game it is that you are playing, from survivors to tiers to pick X, the safest way to play for real money without the hassle of having to track down deposits or worry about payments is through Splash. They have partnered with PaySafe, the best deposit and payment system in the world, to ensure that money stays in safe hands and is delivered to the right places. To join the Field of 68 Survivor Madness, Click the link in our profile below and join in. Entries are five bucks a pop with a prize pool of up to $4,500. Winner take all. Join Splash and come prove that you're smarter than us. All right, let's go through uh, a little bit of the coaching changes here. And I'm going to I'm gonna update. And we're recording this at 11, basically like, 11.30 Eastern time here on uh, Tuesday morning. But as of 11.30, uh, Louisville was spurned by uh, Dusty May, kind of played Louisville and Bandy to some extent, and ended up going with Michigan. What do you mean played him? For, for well, more money? I, or, I, I, I don't, I don't feel him. like his he, deal is like crazy at Michigan. It's not like he leveraged it into getting $6 million a year. No, but he got a good amount of money for a mid-major head coach, actually. But he only got five years. That was more his his agent, Andy Miller's fault for not getting more. I think he should have gotten six. But anyway, I, I think they were leveraging, trying to leverage Vandy in, in Louisville and kind of leading them both on that he was going to take it. He ends up going to Michigan. The right fit there. Uh, good hire. You know, listen, I, I went through this before, a month ago, and I said, these big jobs – don't necessarily look for them all to get big, big boy names because the big boys either have huge buyouts or have some maybe issues and baggage that comes with them. So right now, you know, uh, the Louisville and Kentucky are, are both kind of hot button topics right now. Louisville is looking at, my gut says it's going to be Pat Kelsey at Charleston. Just my gut. It's not done. Josh Schertz is back in the mix from Indiana State, but I think it's hard to hire a guy at Louisville that didn't go to the NCAA tournament. I think yeah. it'd be hard. 
Kelsey's gone two years in a row, Rob. Well, and I like the way that they play at Charleston is, you know, they play fun, fast, shoot three. And he has energy. What is Kel- Kenny Payne didn't really have energy. Pat Kelsey has endless energy, so he can he can give him something they didn't have. Kentucky, I I you know, there's a lot of speculation right now about Cal Perry being done at Kentucky. Something may happen as early as today. Some Wait, sort really? of statement or something. Oh, I thought like they're not. I th- I'd be shocked if they fired him. Me There's too. no way. Me too. But there'll be a meeting with Mitch Barnhart, the athletic director, and Cal Perry, and who knows what how that could go, right? Who knows how how that could play itself out? I agree with you. I think Cal Perry gets another year at Kentucky here, uh, and he he goes. Listen, it shouldn't be that hard to turn it. Shouldn't be that hard. You know, make it make a staff change or two, but ultimately. You got to go in the portal a little harder than you did last year. Um, some other coaching changes that happened. Stanford hires Kyle Smith at Washington State. Vandy hires uh, Mark Byington, James Madison. Washington, Danny Sprinkle, no surprise there. Darian DeVries from Drake goes to West Virginia. Um, those are the main ones right now. Now, some dominoes could happen here soon. Um, and hopefully we'll get this pot out quickly. But um, Andy Enfield could end up at SMU. Thus, Eric Musselman could end up at USC. His wife is from us to the Big Ten. Yeah, yeah. So don't be and, shocked. And Enfield is just like a proactive. This has kind of not gone well since the Elite Eight team. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, and just you know, he, he. I think the the living situation in LA. Uh, wife was there. Uh, I don't know if she grew up there, Danielle Sargent, but she she was definitely lived in LA for a while. Was a sports yeah. uh, caster for a while, um, so I could see that happen. And then Arkansas becomes a very very attractive job for a lot of people. The the you know uh, Jerome Tangs of the world. I would say Will Wade, uh, maybe Chris Beard. Those guys could all be in play at Arkansas. Why, why would Beard leave Ole Miss, like just because resources at Arkansas? I mean, I would it's a better job. It's a way better job. Way but better. Is there not like I, I would think that for him, like just getting back in the game, you'd feel like you want to. I mean, I don't know. There that, should that, be loyalty. There should yeah. be. I don't know. You know, I'm not saying he'll definitely go. I'm saying I, I think he could. Yeah, be, yeah, right. But he'd be in the mix. He could be in. The what mix. What do you think about the, in terms of Dusty May? Yeah. Obviously, last year, amazing, right? You go to the Final Four with FAU. That's incredible. Um, you have the same team this year, and you lose to a, a Northwestern team that didn't have, the, like, two of their big players. Is there any concern that that was, like, just a, a one-year flash in the pan? Or you know better than I. I. I don't – I have not been around their program. Do you just feel like he is – is that good? And the fact that you get FAU there one time, I mean, FAU has never been to that level. I, I totally understand that. But is there any concern that you're like, man, he did that one year and then kind of underachieved this season? Um, I, I think, again, if you look at that job and how bad it is. I've never been. I don't understand their facilities. or Really bad. Really bad. Other than the fact that, you know, people think it's great because it's in Boca Raton. But it's not. Their facilities stink. Their resources stink. So what he did there is actually one of the most impressive things probably in, in the last 25 years in college basketball, getting him to yep, the bottom. That's fair. And getting him back, obviously they didn't do what, what people thought they would do this year. Uh, and I think he'll probably learn from that, right, how to handle some of these, you know, the high major type players and, and the agents around him and everything. Uh, you know, again, I think Dusty's got more shit to him than people realize. And as long as he's got the resources at Michigan, I, I think he'll be pretty good. I do. I think yeah. I think it was a, a good hire. I think Kyle Smith was a good hire at Stanford. I love Danny Sprinkle at Washington. Um, the one I worry about probably the most is West Virginia, hiring Darren DeVries. Only because here's what I worry about with that. Darren's been more of, you know, like a, a clean-cut dude, all that. And, and you go to Morgantown, and you got to deal now with the the – what's left behind from the Bob Huggins deal. Well, and like Huggins still looms so large. He goes to the games, you know, like he still wants the job. It sounds like, you right. know, like that's, that's a tough spot to navigate. And all his boys, a lot of them were the ones putting them, the NIL money in. So, you know, 
our hugs boy is going to be like hell no i'm not giving money anymore yeah and and are you able to raise enough nil just that's a it's a complicated situation it's a complicated situation um but but again i think Tavares has done an incredible job at Drake, and you got to take it. You got to take that one. You know, buying ten at James Madison to to Vandy, like you you take that in a heartbeat. Not sure to work, but I think again, it it's different. You're getting a guy who's locked in. You know the 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 problem was well, that. But I would think Jeff, a lot of this of will it will work is how committed to nil are we? Totally. You know, how much nil are we bringing if I'm coming to take this job? Right. And it's usually, not so much like you know, I I got to pitch these kids and convince them that this it's just can we pay can we pay to get good enough players and then yep. can i coach them up that's really what the deal is now a recruiter of 20 years ago is no longer a recruiter anymore right as an assistant coach as a head coach well i don't care the- how good you are you could be the best recruiter in the world and if and when the, the time comes to ask the question of well what do you got for me in nil if you say we have nothing you're not going to be a very good recruiter. No, no. <laughs> Your recruiting is going to go, it's going to take a hit. No, re- relationships were so important years ago, even even as recently as what, three years ago, right? And now it's like, yeah, they're important, but ultimately, and I'm going to give you a great example. All right, you know this kid, Michi Johnson, started his career at Ohio State for Chris Holtman, uh, was a fairly highly recruited kid. As I, I think the top 100 player. Yeah. Or 125 or his first two years at Ohio State, he was not good. Didn't do anything. He transfers to South Carolina and has two really good years. Last year, he was the best player, leading scorer on a team that two years ago wasn't great. And they're a five seed this year. They they have a chance to win the SEC regular season title. They're terrific. He had an unbelievable season. Unbelievable. And he goes in the portal. He's got one year left. He goes in the portal, Rob. And and you know, my first thought is like, what the hell is he doing? Like, I get it. You're going to make more money somewhere else, probably, than South Carolina. But, like, isn't there something to be said, Rob, for the fact that this was your team last year? You were the there best be. player. There should be. But I, it's going to be really weird. It's, you know, we've the interconference transfers to me are strange. I, I don't love that. And yep. I guess like the Big Ten example would be Evan Mahaffey goes from Penn State to Ohio State. Even though that one makes his coach leaves, he's from Ohio. Like that one makes a little more sense. But when we're gonna we're gonna start seeing like all conference players transfer within conference, that is weird. <laughs> that is so bizarre. Like Michi Johnson could totally end up at some SEC school. Sure, he he totally. easily could be playing at you know Kentucky or or That's wherever. Like, like think twice about that, Rob. That's because you're gonna have bigger conferences too. Yeah, no, I I hate that. I, I just think, so and I'm not saying there's loyalty with Michi Johnson, but I, you would I'm think like, hey, that. it didn't go that well at Ohio State. Man, Lamont Paris really gave me a chance, and I I played great. I'd love to stick this out, and you would think, but For I 50, think that it's all about well, let's what say can I, what offer can I get? What bigger offer can I get? Out Fifty thousand dollars at the end of the day, <laughs> right? Like, okay, fifty grand's a lot of money. I'm not saying it's not, but but at the end of the day, fifty or hundred grand. And you go somewhere else to another high major, and let's say you're a piece on a losing team. Let's say you're not the guy anymore. You become a piece on a, on a team that doesn't have that success. And instead of now you put yourself in the equation where NBA teams are actually looking at you, you can yeah. take a step back too. And, and that, that 50 or 100 grand that you're taking today, you're going to lose it on the back end. Right. I don't know. I just. No, and not all these transfers work out. You know, some of them do. Look at, like, Nick Timberlake at Kansas. Right, right. He was a good player at, what was it, Towson? Towson, yeah, yeah. He he got to play at the end of the year because McCullough stopped playing. By now, you guys have surely heard about Autograph, an app founded by Tom Brady with the intention of disrupting the way that fans consume content covering their favorite teams. This is how the app works. All of the podcasters, bloggers, and digital creators covering a team have their content sent to that team's page in the Autograph app. Instead of having to bounce from site to site or trying to navigate the safer workspaces on Twitter, you can just scroll through Autograph. This isn't a hard sell. This is the truth. I am a UConn fan, and I use the Autograph app to keep up with the writers I read and the pods that I listen to about UConn basketball. The best part is that every piece of content that you consume 
gives you reward points. The more you get, the more chances you have at things like discounted tickets to games and the grand prize, a trip to the LA regional and a spot in a suite for the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight games. Here's the best part. We've partnered with Autograph to donate $1 to the V Foundation every time someone downloads the app using the code F68 with a minimum of $2,500 getting donated. The app is free. So download, use the code F68, help us raise a little bit of money for cancer research and give Autograph a try. I promise you it will be worth it. And while we're here, a quick reminder, make sure that you subscribe to The Daily. We have new landing pages with deep dives into each coaching change, as well as a tracker that provides scouting reports on the transfers that have entered the portal that you are going to want to know about. Hit the link below to subscribe. What's your favorite hire so far? Of the high majors, Dusty <laughs> made to Michigan, Kyle Smith to Stanford, Byington to Vandy, Sprinkle to Washington, DeVries, West Virginia, Jake Diebler, Ohio State, Chris Holtman, DePaul. Give me your favorite hires so far. I guess Dusty May. I mean, the others are are good. I, I think I'm shocked that Chris Holtman took the DePaul job. I live next to DePaul. There's some serious challenges here. There's like just... The, the stadium is so far from campus. Chicago is insane. All the good players are no longer in the city, kind of, you know, like they're all in the burbs and at prep school. Yep. Um, I just, I don't know if you can win. And I just think that he could have gotten a better job. Now, I yeah. I don't know what the... He would have had to wait, probably. That's fine. You know, like, I, I, I'm not saying that he could have got a better job immediately. Yeah. But I just... I think if this goes poorly at DePaul, <clears throat> now you're really in trouble from a career standpoint. You've made a lot of money. You know, maybe yep. that's your set, but I who is his staff? Do you know? So he brought um uh, yeah, he just he brought uh brought Jack Owens with him and he hired Brian Mullins. Those are the two so oh. far. Well, I know Jack Owens really good. I played for him. Um, yep. Brian Mullins from uh, Southern Carolina. Illinois. So, oh, Southern Illinois. Yeah, well, that's that's a good staff dad, so far. Remember, his dad runs the Illinois Wolves. Mm -hmm. Pat, Pat, right? Uh, no, no, not Pat. Mullins. That was Pat Mullins. No, no, it's not. It's oh wait, I went to elementary school with Pat Mullins. <laughs> you had the wrong name. Uh, uh, Mike Mullins. Sorry, Mike Mullins. Pat Mullins. <laughs> uh, all right, last thing before we leave. You are the athletic director at the University of Kentucky. Your name is Mitch Barnhart for the purposes of this. Uh, what do you do with John Calipari right now? When you go in and, and you meet with him later today, what do you do? What is your what is your plan? I think just it's like come to Jesus meeting on the program. I don't. I don't think he's. I don't think you fire him. I just don't look. I look around and say, "Well, who are you going to get that's better? Like, who are you going to who are you going to get that's that's going to do a better job?" I I don't feel like that person is out there. I think Barnhart's in a tough spot. I think it's all about all right. This has happened way too many times of us losing early in the NCAA tournament, whether it's you know St. Peter's or last year against Oakland or this year against Oakland. What What do we need to do to stop this from happening? Is it staff? Is it you know, what what do you think are the problems? And then I would obviously weigh in on what I think are the problems and we would we would hash it out. Yeah, I, I would probably make, you know, one staff change. Maybe I would I would uh make sure he understands that like we're not doing this freshman laden thing again. Yeah, I think that's got that's that's not the game anymore. Right. And it's just baffling that he did it last year. Cause again, it could have been a way worse. If Antonio Reeves was able to transfer and they didn't get Trey Mitchell, think of how, how young they would have been. But also to hear him be, you know, talk about, well, that team is old and we are young. Right. You don't have to be. Right. No one's holding a gun to your head saying, like, you can only take freshmen on this team. <laughs> so Baffling to me. Yeah, that, that is weird. In a way, I, I feel like Kentucky has benefited more than anybody through NIL, in a way, for Cal. Because, again, now they can always get the best players, but they have money. They have they have an insane amount of money. In fact, they've they've basically gone the route now 
they, they did some thing with La Familia or something. And it's like a crowd sourcing way of raising money. Yeah. So literally they've started a collective in which fans can contribute. So Somebody sent me an article though, Jeff, about an NIL thing for Kentucky. I forget which player it was on this team this year about how he was offering this, this guy, and this could be totally full of crap. Who knows if this is true, but this guy was offering, I guess, a high five figure or like six figure deal to sign stuff. And it was sent, it was sent over to an assistant coach, in Kentucky. And they're like, Oh yeah, I think this will work. And then they just never heard back. And then that player never, never actually heard about it and was actually going to that guy, like looking for NIL deals, which if that's the case, I, that that's, Weird. I forget who it was. It might have been Antonio Reeves, or yeah, I think it was Antonio. I, I saw Reeves. the report too. The only thing it could be it could be a lie. It might not be true. The person who did the report, I, I believe, wants Cal out. So, um, so it, yeah, so it's it's probably slanted. There's I don't some, know. Maybe don't some know. truth to it, but it's probably right. not the whole truth. Yeah, I mean, listen again. I, I would say, uh, if I'm Mitch Barnhart, it's hey, listen, Cal. Here's the deal. If we don't get it done this year, that that's gonna be it. That's going to be it. Make some changes. Let's come up with an actual game plan. But what I was getting back to is like, okay, if you're Cal and you don't want to recruit that hard anymore, you don't have to. All you got to do is go in the the portal now, you know, visit a couple kids. Kids probably come to your campus even. Um, But you can Zoom and you can get them. Like, it's easy for a school like Kentucky now. The hard part is doing the evaluations early enough. Plan to make sure that they're not going to like blow up your team. That's it. Because you <laughs> the, don't know the, these the character witnesses are more important probably than anything. You know to make sure that they fit with your group and aren't going to be terrible to to coach. That's that's where you got to do your homework. Very very true. Very true. All right, listen. Um, I got to get my boys some rest here. Um, when do you leave for Detroit? Tomorrow. Wednesday. Tomorrow. 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 No rest for the weary, Rob. That's true. This, this is a grind. This is a grind. Two more weeks, and you'll be on the yeah. course. You could be on the course two weeks from today if you do it right. When I laid my – I'll be on there before. I'm definitely playing at the Final Four. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a couple times. A couple times. Um, when I rest my head on the pillow, I just visualize my golf swing. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. Visualizing the summer golf swing that's about to take place. If, if there's anybody out there that can fix Hummel's golf swing, uh, please let us know. We're, we're taking all all golf uh, experts that can. Are we going to play pickleball at the uh, at the final four? Are you going to pr- you want to bring out? I'll bring out a racket. I think I have one. Yeah, I can I can I can stash one in there. Are you going to be Are you going to be adaptable to my schedule? I I mean I have some stuff to do too. I'm doing serious XM radio stuff, so we'll figure it out. We will play. I'll Pro- try. Here's my I'll question try. to you. Here's my question. Like, how much singles pickleball have you played? I mean, I've played more doubles, but I've played some singles. All right, all right. I mean, my ground strokes are immaculate, so I don't know. You don't know what you're getting into. I'm, I'm taught by one of the all-time greats, Glenn Hummel, one of the great <laughs> pickleball players. That's that is the problem. I haven't really been. Uh, it runs tutored. in my blood, you know. I like, haven't I been just, tutored in I've the pickleball those, game like like you have. It's a little I've unfair. Those, I've advantage. got the good pickleball genes. I'm, I'm gonna we'll see how i do we'll see how i do i feel like you're overrated but i think you don't want this problem you i don't probably problem. don't but we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot we're gonna give it a shot i will bring out uh the pickleball paddle maybe we'll see if we can you know if, if scott drew and and mark few are out there maybe we can get a little doubles going with I, they with love scott. to play scott hands are gonna be out there he might be too good though he, he's I, probably too good he plays to play. all the time like no I, he loves it he he's like I feel like he's yes. the the 35-year-old version of my dad who's like trying to become like a pro almost. Well, I heard this is Hansborough's mm-hmm. deal, right? He gets obsessed with something and then he goes cold turkey off it at some point. Like oh, you know, he like this, he like burns himself out. Yeah, this is psycho team with anything. Like whatever he picks, he just uh-huh. gets so obsessed and then he's out. But I could I mean, when you commit to something that hard, he he's he's definitely not He's never going to be a guy that doesn't bring the intensity on stuff. He exactly. basketball, pickleball, whatever, whatever he's in on, he's in on. I would actually love to have him on my team against you and have him. Would, slam yeah, him. he's he's going to be an animal. That dude. Think <laughs> about playing basketball against him and then taking that intensity to the pickleball no court. 
I've decided it's going to be me and Tyler. Again. No, I won't play Scott that. Drew. And you and Scott, you get Scott Drew. Well, how good is Coach Drew? Awesome. I've been told he's elite. He's probably like the king of the the second or the third shot drop, just like <laughs> dropping that thing in the kitchen. Probably yeah. true. Right? Can't you right. picture him just like? I just hate that you're going to get Hansbro and he's going to be like flying all over and you could just be freaking picking your nose on the other yeah. side, not doing shit. Yeah. That's what you want. I do. Absolutely. Will, you know what though? Oh yeah. We will hit it to you every time. Tyler, we Bring will take on. Tyler out of the game. Bring it on. Bring it on. That's all I have to say. Bring it on. I'm going to be I'll, dinking it right to you. I got to get, <laughs> I got to get some, some practice in before I get out there, which I don't think is going to happen. Maybe, maybe there's a, I don't know. Maybe T.J. Otzenberger plays here in Boston. He can get away, you know. Yeah, Brad he has, Underwood, he has important stuff to do. Brad Underwood playing pickleball the day before the. He's a go- Underwood's a golfer. He likes to golf. Yes, that's very true. All right, we'll see you next week. Good minute, humble pod. Enjoy uh, Sweet Sixteen, Elite Eight, and uh, next week could be the final week of the pod. We'll see. We might do two more. We might do two more. Good Minute Hummel podcast, and we got Robbie Hummel. I've known you since you were a kid. I could blow my knee out, both knees, and still kick your ass. We're trying to find the Robbie Hummel statue. I wanted to kill you. 